So what is the aim of pin placement? Stable fixation both in femur and tibia should not get loose during procedure needed to mount the sensors or the trackers and everyone is concerned about that pin should not come in between operative field and position of the trial components and should not get loosened during surgery especially in osteoporotic bones or in rheumatoid arthritis patients. The pin placement which is recommended on femur one hand breadth superior to the patella in the anterior portion of the femoral shaft and on the tibia one hand, one hand breadth inferior to the tibial tubercle medial to the tibial crest and perpendicular to the flat medial surface of the tibia. Installing the femur and tibial trackers, the slide the trackers clamp over the two pins, ensure that the trackers are visible in all the points of flexion and extension and then you have to tighten those clamps. Adjusting the tracking, the target the green region in far and near camera range to achieve optimal position for smooth execution of surgery. Red or orange region is either too far or too near. So this is the way how we put the pins. Two pins anteriorly in the femur and two anteriorly on the tibia. Tips for correct pin placement. Pin placement should be bicortical, just engaging the second cortex. Avoid transcortical pins to avoid the risk of fracture and avoid multiple attempts because that will again increase the chances of fracture. Debatable concern about the pin placement is unicortical or bicortical, diaphyseal or metaphyseal pins and small or large diameter pins. The technical concern with bicortical pins is the location of the pin hole may influence the rate of fracture or the diaphysis may be at higher risk than the periarticular bone. The reason periarticular bone is more robust to torsional and bending stresses than the diaphysis. So Beldam et al. warned that almost all the post-operative fractures in this series originated at the diaphyseal pin holes. So nowadays, most of the people, they have shifted their pin position from diaphysis to periarticular region. The percutaneous pins are difficult to place completely centered on the bone in obese or muscular thighs. And unintentionally, it is not uncommon to have drilled an eccentric or transcortical pins. The error of eccentric drilling becomes clear only on post-operative radiograph. And that's why all the fractures reported by uh, Beldam et al., they are originated from the transcortical pins. Placing a pin through bone cortices in the diaphysis weakens the bone and so these are the few complications. One is pin track infection, which is almost uh, not seen in any case. Neuropraxia or bleeding is also rare. And the fracture, there, there are chances if you fix the pins in diaphysis, there is a chance that you may get fracture in osteoporotic bones. So these are the few papers. Do cortical diaphyseal array pins create the risk of periprosthetic fracture in robotic assisted knee arthroplasty? And there is a lower incidence of post-operative femoral shaft fracture compared to conventional biocortical diaphyseal pinning if you put the pins in periarticular regions. In this study, they have studied around 2,603 2, knees, biocortical diaphyseal pins in 60% and unicortical periarticular pins in 40% cases, and they have shown that there is no fracture in periarticular pin fixations. A comparison of the pin set complication between large and small pin diameter in robotic assisted total knee replacement surgery, 3.2 millimeter pin is better than 4.5 and the chances of fracture are less with this pin. The other chances or other complications with pin like pin track infection or there is a uh, bleeding or there is a non-healing of the wound, neurovascular injuries, they are rare and they are only theoretical as per my experience. 
So in my experience with robotic TK, till now we had more than 1,000 cases. First 200 cases, we fixed bicortical diaphyseal pin for both the femur and tibia. Pin track infection and abscess zero, bleeding zero, neuropraxia zero. There, there was one case of fracture, tibia, which was healed with plaster. And in next around 800 cases, we shifted to periarticular metafacial pins for the tibia and bicortical diaphyseal pins for the femur, and there, there is no complication. Thank you.